Hey designer, Alex here, welcome to the channel and in today's video we are going to create this awesome looking website for e-commerce purposes and we are going to introduce a bit of animation and if I click right here to initiate the animation you can see all of these elements flying into place positioning where they need to be and we can add additional animations if we want to for example to animate all of these circles and position them around and as you can see right here from these buttons we also included hover effects so let's get started All right, let's get started with this tutorial. And as you can see, I have this practice file and you guys can get this practice file if you join my membership alongside all of the other practice files uh, from my YouTube channel and all of the courses I have created so far, plus 500 plus design products, which are going to help you improve your workflow and your speed alongside mentorship, private access to the Facebook group and much more. So if you're interested, link is going to be down in the description below. In case you're not, you can simply follow along with the resources you have and you can go ahead and recreate this document. So to get started, uh, as I said, I have this document 1920 by 1080, all of these things prepared right here. And I have uh, columns, uh, 12 columns, I have gutter width of 69, column width of 80 and right here margins left and right of 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually get started with my navigation. So I'm going to type in features and I'm going to convert to this one and I'm going to go ahead and put it in a group. I'm going to call this group nav and I'm going to include a stack which is going to be horizontal stack then make some copies. So on this one I'm going to write in pricing. Next up I'm going to write in about us and finally I'm going to write in contact us right here. Next up, I'm going to give this a distance of 80 and I like how that looks like so far. Next up, I'm going to bring in my button. So I have my button prepared already and this button has just a basic cover state with this color inside and this uh, font size, uh, which is medium inside. I'm going to position this nav to the center like this and then what I'm going to do is create a circle like this. I'm going to remove the border and include this color position it right here just so uh, when I include my logo which is white and position it right here just so that you guys can see it and obviously the audience uh, who is uh, viewing this website at the end can see it as well. Then I'm going to make sure everything is in the center, hit control G to group everything, position it to the top like so, shift 1, 2, 3, 4, make sure it's 40 down and then simply go right here, call it navigation like so and make sure that I order them like this. I'm going to call this one circle because we are actually going to create multiple of these circles and roughly position it somewhere around here because I don't want it to hide too much of this space uh, but I still want it to show my logo as well. Next up let's create this text which is going to go right here. So I'm going to use my uh, text tool and go right here to craft your perfect website like this. I'm going to use Poppins 90 and by the way Poppins is a free Google font and you can get it uh, at Google font uh, Google fonts website. Next up I'm going to basically copy and paste this text from my original design and simply use this one like that and then let's see what we can do maybe we can position them to be 40 from each other like this and I'm going to make a duplicate of this text and simply type in watch demo like this and then I'm going to move it just a little bit position these two just up a little bit and basically bring in another button right here and for this button I'm going to position it to be 80 from our text make sure that this is in the center of my button and simply aligned to this grid line right here like this and instead of a login I'm going to write in get started control C to copy this text and I'm going to uh, go to my button hover state 
and basically paste in that same text so when users hover they have the same text for both default state and hover state as well. Next up, let's quickly organize these uh, text layers a bit. So button is going to go right here and all of this is going to go below this one. And finally group all of them, hit control G, call it text like so. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring in my rectangle tool, go all the way down to the logo and to the button edge and select these two, click right here so I can position my text in the center and basically call it a day. Now comes the fun part because we're going to play around with all of these circles and with all of these different elements. So as I said, what I'm going to do is duplicate this circle and I'm going to make sure I bring it in right here. Then I'm going to use this color and let's see, perhaps even this color and then simply enlarge it a lot to something like this. And I'm going to basically make sure I position it roughly around here, for example. Then I'm going to bring in my iMac and position it roughly around here, for example. Make sure that, for example, I go top edge with this uh, text or I can even go in the center, depending on what you want to achieve. But because I want to uh, position my keyboard and my mouse right here, I want to make sure I put it just a little bit up to roughly around here. Then I'm going to bring in my keyboard, position it, for example, right here, because I want it to float a little bit and I want it to uh, show a little bit more. So for example, somewhere around here, maybe I can even make sure that this is smaller or, yeah, let's position it right here. Keyboard is going to be half and half, so roughly around here, maybe a little bit down. And finally with the mouse, I'm going to bring it in and make sure it's somewhere around here. Hey designer, sorry to interrupt myself, but I just wanted to quickly mention that you can get this practice file alongside every course and product I have ever made in my membership. You can get this practice file if you want to follow along this and every future video I make. Link is going to be down in the description below so you can check it out if you're interested. Now let's get back to the video. When I'm happy with the result, to somewhere around here. Perhaps I can bring in my shoe, make sure it is right around here, for example, but I still don't like the position of this IMAX, so I'm going to nudge it all the way to here, make sure my shoe is in frame to roughly around here, and then I'm going to bring in my filter card to somewhere around here. You guys can obviously create all of these different elements uh, however you want to, but I'm just using these elements which I already went ahead and prepared because I have a bunch of them already lying around. What I'm going to do next is bring in a bunch of these circles and the first two I'm going to create are actually going to be outline of this circle. So hit Control D and I'm going to simply shift it over to roughly around here bring in my border, hide in my fill, and I don't like this uh, border uh, size. So I'm going to bring it into, let's say 40% like this. And I'm going to hit control D to duplicate it and simply move it roughly around here. And I can even make it larger to something like this. And I can then move this one to be something like this and then simply bring it over with my shift key right here. And there we have it. Uh, the last thing what, which I want to do is position this circle on top of this circles and let's call it main circle, for example. And I'm going to call this outline circle and give this outline circle too, just so that we know what it is. Next up, I'm going to hit Control D one more time to duplicate this one, position it roughly around here, but I want to make sure that it's on top so I can position these three, which are our main circles basically, below all of these other circles, just so we don't get confused once we start animating them later. So I'm going to position it roughly around here, for example, or even better, you can position it right here. You can see how the keyboard is standing out nicely against uh, this circle but I'm going to use this color and hit four on my keyboard, for example, just so I can bring the opacity down a little bit on it. Control D one more time. I'm going to place this one right here, make it smaller. Shift Control D is the shortcut. Control D one more time on this one. I'm going to position it roughly around here, for example. Make sure I bring it in nice and close, use this color 
and let's see maybe we can nudge it just a bit to here maybe so as I said it's all really up to you and you can play around with all of these different positions how you want to uh, place all of these elements and basically the point of these elements is nothing less than to uh, bring in a bit more visual interest uh, for your visitors so let's see what was my last circle this one I'm going to nudge it just a bit down because it's uh, clashing against my computer here against my iMac so I'm going to position it here and obviously this is the mock-up of the older version of iMac and you can find newer versions online if you want to but as I said this is just fine for me finally control D and I'm going to make one big circle position it right around here maybe something like this and let's see when I click outside I don't like it maybe 20 yeah I think 20 is going to work just fine with this example and with that said our design is basically completed the last thing which we need to do for this project is to animate it and to put everything into perspective but before we do I need to bring in uh, a design uh, inside of this iMac mockup so what I'm going to do is locate my iMac here it is and I want to also organize all of these layers so here is my screen layer I'm just going to drag and drop my design inside I'm going to position my screen layer and basically the only thing which this screen layer does is just gives uh, a bit of shade uh, so it, everything is not, not completely white but everything uh, has a bit of purpose and a bit of uh, clarity against each other so let's quickly organize all of these uh, layers so I'm going to bring in all of these into circles navigation is going to go to the top text is going to go right here next up we can put all of these so control G elements because all of these are basically these elements which are going to float and as I said you can double click and reorganize them if you want to maybe bring this into 60 or 80 or whatever you want maybe make this one just a bit smaller because it appears to be further away from these ones maybe something like this just go a little bit finer on our details and I like how that looks like so basically what we uh, need to do right here is hit Control S obviously to save or it's going to automatically save if you're working in a cloud document I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate this artboard and basically this is going to be our end state where all of our elements are going to end up so what we need to do for this first state is obviously animate everything and organize them uh, in such a way so that we make our design a little bit more interesting so what I'm going to do first is double click on our logo position it roughly around here hit zero two times so it's zero opacity zero on this one and basically position this button outside of our design right here just make sure everything is in the group because if it's not it's going to simply fly off the page next up this circle I'm going to position it for example right around here maybe and make sure that it's zero opacity because I want it to land first before I, uh, my logo next this one I'm going to hold my shift key and position it roughly around here reduce my opacity same with this one I'm going to nudge my uh, button all the way outside of my design I don't even have to uh, bring down my opacity you can if you want to so let's do that let's bring it all the way down let's bring this down and perhaps a little bit to the right next up let's bring this card right around here and maybe even a bit up to somewhere around here zero on the opacity and for the shoe and all of these other elements I don't want them to be zero in opacity what I want to do is basically just nudge the shoe out of the frame because it's PNG and it's cut right to here we still have some place uh, some room to play around with and same thing with our Mac so just around here same thing with our mouse and let me quickly hide these grid lines so they are not this distracting and you can easily see what I'm doing so with the mouse I'm just going to nudge it out of the frame just a touch like this and maybe move it just a bit up for example and with the keyboard same thing so I'm just going to nudge it just 
when it reaches out to the frame, but you can see, it, see it's still inside of our artboard. For our circles, you can play around with them however you want. I'm going to position this one right here. This one can be here. This one can be even up, for example. Let's see which one it is. This one. Let's see, maybe right up to here and maybe zero in opacity. This can stay white. This can be right here and maybe nudge it a bit down. This can be right here, for example. And these two circles can follow it and basically maybe we can even animate them so when they are here they can be way smaller to something like this so you can see how small they are and when they appear they're going to be quite big basically that's it that's what we created and that's the only thing which you need to do between all of your states basically now comes the time for us to prototype it what I did previously is use the tap trigger. You can use the time trigger with the delay, but I'm going to show you the tap trigger itself. So simply bring this here, use the tap. Transition is going to be auto animate, ease in out, and this can be five seconds just so that we can have a bit of separation and a bit of space. So when I hit preview, enlarge this, click here, you can see that all of these elements are nicely coming into play and all of them are animating nicely. But just remember, if you're using time trigger, you can also add a delay. So if I switch back to here, so when users land, it's going to be a delay before this action starts happening. And also you can add additional artboard. So this is the artboard too. You can make another duplicate if you want to animate these circles further. What I don't like uh, right here is I don't like how this circle looks like. So I'm going to jump in right here, go to my design, bring it up to 100. And now when I hit preview, I like how it looks like there. You can also see that these hover effects work as they should. And let's check it out one more time just for the sake of it. So you can see all of these elements are flying in nicely. You can also move this shoe a bit further because it's the part of the group. And let's actually do that so I can show you that effect as well. So if I jump in right here and I need to simply click on one of these objects, elements, shoe. So let's say because it's in a uh, folder, I can position it way right here. So when we hit preview, click right here. Just watch the shoe because it lands from here and it just brings a bit more visual interest to our design. So there we have it. That's how easy it is to animate our designs in Adobe XD. Thank you for watching this video and I really hope you found some value in it. If you did, make sure to press that like button because it really helps the algorithm and other designers finding this channel. If you like this sort of videos, I upload every single week on Adobe XD about design, passive income techniques, motivation and more. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.